this service. I pray that everyone is blessed and get the blessing with the speaker that we have here coming today. Um, thank you so much and we love you. Amen. Amen. First, we're going to have uh, some quick announcements. Um, I think my dad has one first. So we're going to have... Happy Sabbath. How many of you know what's happening next week? What's next week? Fifth Sabbath. Nobody sound excited about Fifth Sabbath. How many know what happened next week? Fifth Sabbath, praise and testimony. Please tell everybody about Fifth Sabbath. Wednesday night, we have Wednesday night prayer meeting at what time? What time do we get out of Wednesday night prayer meeting, church? Eight o'clock. We start at seven. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. And we stop at eight o'clock. We are in the Galatians, the fifth chapter. So please come out and enjoy that. We have a, a special person in, in the building that's representing Pleasant Hill Academy. Many of our students have graduated from there. I'm going to have Brother Mitchell come Amen. and Amen. tell us the good things that's happening at Pleasant Hill. We're so glad to have you. Amen. Stay right here with me. <laughs> so good to be back here. I feel like when we walk in the room, Two things are going to happen. We're going to get hugged a lot. <laughs> and we're in the Lord's house, so we're going to be blessed. Yes. Yes. And when uh, I had a nice conversation with Brother Morgan yesterday, yeah. and we at the academy want to make sure that we have a strong relationship with the churches. We recognize that we don't want to have a one-way street, that you're just, we're asking you to send your kids. That our kids need to come back into the churches and minister. 
as we educate them. Something that dawned on me this week I want to share with you briefly. Um, as I was studying the Sabbath school lesson, thank you, Brother Daniel, for leading us to the Sabbath school lesson this morning, is that the memory text talked about Paul saying, I want you to be like I am, except the chains. And what I realized is, all of us come from different backgrounds and different cultures, and you see chains binding us wherever we go. And I was reading in Matthew chapter 8, and and a leper comes up to Christ and said, Lord, if you're willing, cleanse me. And Jesus, immediately, the Bible says in verse 2, chapter 8, he said, he touched him and cleansed him. And he said, I'm willing, be cleansed. Amen. And what I realize is that you step into church, he's Sabbath. There's something here that Jesus offers that you don't find anywhere else in the world. And that's cleansing for your soul. I need it every day. I pray about it every day. But I also think our academy offers something you don't find in any other school. And that is, every discipline that our children learn about, there's a Christian worldview. There's an effort to lift up Christ in every discipline to say, He offers cleansing for your soul. Now, much like Brother Daniel, I work in the sciences. He works in the medicine side. And I work in the water and wastewater side. So... So what I will tell you is that he helps people cleanse their bodies, and what he flushes down comes to me, and I cleanse it further and send it to the bay. So we're all in the cleansing business, but the ultimate cleanser is Christ himself. And so we want to reach out to your community to say, our academy offers something you won't find anywhere else. And whatever your children need, whatever your challenge for your family, be it transportation, or it's finances. Our job as a school is to minister. And we will find a way to work with your family, to minister to your family's needs and your children. So I encourage you to speak with me afterward, to reach out to the school, help us work together to raise these children for the kingdom. Thank you. Amen. 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 You know, I'm a child, well, not an adult, kind of, of Christian education, and I definitely understand why, you know, it's a sacrifice, and it's a, it's what your parents want you to be a part of, and definitely grateful for that experience, so I appreciate, appreciate that. <laughs> Our next quick announcement, um, I'm currently planning a mission trip, amen? Amen. 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 Um, it's been born out of Berea, but I'm spreading it out for anyone, anyone who wants to come, any of the churches who want to be a part of it, it doesn't matter. Um, we are currently going through um, PUC. They have established a lot of uh, relationships in other countries. We're going to start with them and use them. Uh, and I have a quick video, video to show you that kind of shows what we're going to be doing 2020 in Kenya. And a um, quick video of what they previously did and kind of what an idea of what we're going to be doing as well. So I'm going to show you this quick video if we can. Sure. If it works.
That can have an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Very And he pretty much was like, no, I think this is something that you should bring home and bring home to your church. Bring and then bring people back because this is a it opens your eyes to see that people who look just like me that need help in a different way than I do. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's an opportunity for us to take what we know here and bring it to somewhere else and to help someone else and serve someone else. Um, so. Uh, sign up sheets in the back, like I said. Uh, sign up when you um, can after church or whatever. So thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I'll be signing up, Noah. Thank I'm you. excited. I'm excited. 2020, Kenya, here we come. Maria, you all with us? Come on. Okay, amen, amen. And another thing we like to do here on Fort Sabbath is to uplift our spirits and remind ourselves of what we're grateful for this week. And so out front, when you came in, you had an opportunity to write on the board as the Bria family things that you guys were grateful for. We're just going to read it. Um, someone said that they're grateful for a job, grateful for family, grateful for <laughs> Wi-Fi and Instagram, family and friends. Yes, technology is a beautiful thing. So whoever wrote that, yes, I agree with you. Family and friends for life. Amen. For grace. Yes. And for church family. That's all of you guys. And for God in my family, amen. And so we're going to put this back on front, but just continue as you guys go throughout your week. Just remember the things you guys are grateful for, because I know sometimes weak things can just take you out or just bore your spirit. So just remind yourself of the things you're grateful for. And our quote for this week is, when you're at your lowest, look to the highest. And we know that to be Jesus Christ. Amen. So great things going to come up.
Amen. And is he a great God, amen? He's an awesome God. He's a great God. Our next song's going to be, does everybody clap your hands? That's what it is. I want to hear you clap your hands, amen? All right. Give it a chance to get it right. 
with all that's new. right now, just remember God's grace. Yes. Yes. If you're dealing with a situation where you just can't figure it out and you're just like, Lord, this is who I used to be. This is who I want to become now. Just remember God's grace. Amen. So whatever your form of prayer posture is, I ask that you will take it right now where there's kneeling. You want to stand or you want to get on your knees or you can come down. Just remember God's grace. Heavenly Father, you are so powerful, you are so mighty, and you are greatly to be praised. Thank you so much for the gift of grace that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, that gives us all the gift of salvation. Thank you so much for grace, dear Lord. As you've given us grace, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you, we, we will be able to bestow upon those who need our forgiveness and who also need grace. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for bringing us, bringing us out of things in the past, Lord Father, as we try to move forward in the future. I pray for those, Lord Father God, who are in need of their finances to be turned around those who are in need of new jobs, those who are in back in school, Heavenly Father, we know that um, the kids are back in school, Lord Jesus, and we ask that you would keep them safe. We ask that you would give them the, the mindset, Lord Father, that yes, they are back in school, and so homework needs to be done, Heavenly Father. So we ask that any area in their lives in which they're struggling right now, Lord Father God, that you will pour upon them grace. Be with us, dear Lord, as you continued to watch over us, Heavenly Father. Please be with everyone in this room. Everyone's going through different trials and tribulation, joys, happiness, whatever it is, Heavenly Father, continue to give us grace, dear Lord. And again, as I have spoken, Heavenly Father, if we need to extend grace to those who are around us because they have done something to our lives and it's affected us, Lord Jesus, in a way where we think that it is not possible to forgive them, Heavenly Father. Please remind us of the grace that you have given us from the very beginning of time. We thank you so much for the things that you've done in our past. We thank you for the things that you're doing now. We thank you for the things that you are doing moving forward, dear Lord. Bless us and keep us, Lord Father God, and bind us in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning or afternoon. Hey. 
you guys enjoyed yourselves so far? Amen. That's good. I'm here to read the scripture. It comes from Genesis 12.1. And if you'd like to join me, I'll give you guys a few minutes or seconds to get your Bibles out or your phone. It is Genesis 12, chapter 12, verse 1. All right. So the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. May the God add a rich blessing to his reading and the word. I memorized that in the past. <laughs> Church, have you been blessed so far? Amen. Let's give our young people a, a round of round applause. I want to introduce uh, to some and to others, you're going to be so blessed that you're here today. This is a special day. We have Sister LaVon Gillette. And before she comes up, there was a testimony that she had spoken on Facebook. And a lot of friends and family had just, just was amazed by how well it was presented. And I thought, and the group, our young adult, who was in charge of Fourth Sabbath, thought it would be an awesome experience for you who are here today to be able to experience. Her message is about the effects of forgiveness. How many of you ever had to do something that you had to be forgiven for? It's a powerful effect. When you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you through you and forgive somebody, even though they may have done you wrong. So I'm going to bring up, I told her it's, it's sleep in Sabbath, if she could take her time. Amen. Be blessed. And I present to you, Sister Levon Gillette. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all for the invitation. Thank you so much. Um, nervous. So uh, on Gen on July second, I lost my mom, my biological mom, the one that didn't raise me. But what's in her blood is in me. Amen. And being raised by my my mom that raised me for 18 years, she taught me how to behave, characteristics, such and such. But when I got to an age of, I want to say 13, I had a neighbor that moved into our house. And what I thought was a friend that we just connect like that when they were walking to school. And she goes, that's not your mom. This is your mom. And whips out a picture of someone that looks exactly like me. For a 13-year-old, I had no idea how to, how to feel. I felt numb. I felt betrayed. And so I go to school, and I'm just sitting there. I didn't even go to class that whole entire day. My mom got phone calls. My mom wasn't in school. She thought I had missed school. And I told her, I said, well, such and such says, you're not my mom. And she showed me a picture that of another lady named Phil. And she said, that's a lie. But you could not take that image from, until this day, I have that same exact picture of Mom Phyllis. And I, you could not take that image. I said, well, Mom, why does she look like me? How come I look like her? She said, that's a lie. I don't want you to hang around with them kids. They're lying to you. I'm your mother. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So when you grow up, life happens, right? My house got caught on fire. I lost a brother. I lost a sister. So you forget about what happened in the eighth grade. You forget about things that you, you that emotion, that raw emotion. That didn't matter because I just lost the house. And you have all these people rush into you talking about what do you need? What do you have? only to get nothing, mm. but just to say, oh, I saw you on TV. I, I still have your clippings in the newspaper. Mm. And then you have a lady, so we're moving. My mom, my other sister, we're moving into another house that we call an aunt house. And that's my biological aunt that I have no idea. Wow. I don't know that that's my biological aunt. Who's a cousin of the aunt, say, hey, tell LeVon, go, go up the street. I go up the street, there's a lady. Platinum blonde hair. Now, I remember this lady because I used to say, y'all remember the back in the day when you used to be like, oh, that goes your mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you talking about mama? That's your mama. <laughs> so I did that one day on the bus and I was telling my brother, hey, that goes your mama. Well, it turns out that lady was my mama. Wow. And he, she goes, go tell Levon, go see that lady. 
So I go and see her, and she has platinum blonde hair. And she looks exactly like me, but she looks scared because drugs play a fact. Mm -hmm. Drugs is in her system. She's drunk, and she's like, I'm your mom. Come here. Mm. Now, that's scary. Yeah. She goes, where's your brother? And I'm like, what? Your brother. Now, I've been telling him all day, all, since we're little, you adopted, because he's Filipino. He looks Mexican. You didn't tell me we got the same mom? Like, your mind is just blown. I'm like, what is going on? So I, I'm like, no, I'm not going. So I go again and say, Mom, this lady says she's my mom. Again, she says, that's a lie. She's lying to you. That is not your mom. I'm your mom. I put, I put clothes on your back. I put food on the table. I help with homework. When you need something, I get it. I'm your mom. Now, when you're a kid, you don't understand what she's trying to say and what the message she's trying to convey. All you know is you look like this lady that's scary, and she says that she's your mom, but the image is in your head. So when she, can I put this? So when, so let's skip, so, okay, you're my mom. We, mind you, we moved because our house caught on fire. We go into my aunt house. Now we move to another house. And I go to a high school now. My same cousins, or friends rather, she goes, hey, your grandma want to say hi to you. What grandma? My grandma died when I was like eight. What grandma? So she goes, your grandma, she says she waves to you every day in class. Now there is a little frail lady in class that comes, drop off the school newspaper, and says, don't say much, but wave. Hey, I'm not the only one in class, so everybody waves. <laughs> Every day she does this. Every day she does this. So then I'm like, okay. My cousin says, hey, your grandmother wants to meet you. I go up, and it's that same lady, who I look like. Mind you, I go home and say, mom, okay, you got to tell me something. You say Phyllis is not my mom, but this lady at my school, she looks like me. She looks like Phyllis. We got the same big old eyes. We got the same high cheekbones. We look alike. And she still tells me, that's not your mom. She's not your mom. So now I come into Christ, right? And I go to a, a church called Old Path. You remember, he watched me grow up. I go to a church across the street. Well, right across the street from church, from Opaths, is a little small church called Grace Baptist Temple. Guess who's attending? Phyllis Briscoe. And she's known me attending there. I've attended there for years. Finally, she goes, knock on there. Hey, tell my daughter to come out. Who's your daughter? The pastor raised her, helped raise her. Who's your daughter? The whole time I'm attending there. LaVon, she right there. They fall up. Like, I watched your mom grow up with my children. And that's your mom. And I'm like, okay, I gotta make a decision here. Mom, I go home and say, you know what? I'm gonna learn from my mom. She said, no, you're not. You ain't going over there. So as a kid, you're dealing with self and who you are. So I start sneaking to go see Phyllis. I start catching the bus, walking catching a cab, sneaking to go and see her and learn from her. Why, what do I do that's like you? We sing, we do this. Now, I'm not gonna say her, <laughs> but if you wanna hear a twinkle little star, I can tear that up. <laughs> Probably in a, in a nice way or in a worse way, but I can tear it up. So I start learning, and then I'm writing, I'm journaling. Well, my mom reads this journal. And church was an escape for me because I, I didn't feel like I belonged, right? For years I've been told, yeah, that's not true. So now you, you build up a, a, a thing of distrust. I don't trust you. You're not telling me the truth. So I, I stay in my room, read my Bible. I throw out everything that I thought I had to throw out. So now on my mom's side, on the one that raised me, she's thinking, oh, you think you're better than me. Looking back, I can probably say, why, oh, I understand why she felt that way. So she goes, okay. Since you think the grass is greener on the other side, you're going to have to find you another place to stay. And I'm like, okay. Because before then, when I was learning Phyllis Sheep, I was journaling it, right? She was reading it. She tried to 
put me onto a, a Greyhound to go to Utah. I told her I'm not going. I'm not going. So now she, I can't, she can't control me and I get kicked out. So I'm working and I ask the Lord, Lord, you know, I don't have no way to, I don't have no way to go. Well, what's the thing that sings the song, No One's Like You? What's his name that came to the church? And he's a singer. He sings, um, gosh, I can't even think of his name. But he comes to our church and he says, the Lord told me, he gives me a scripture and he says, Genesis 12 and 1. Hmm. Get thee away from your family. And of course, I'm excited. Like, he's talking to me. I just got kicked out. Like, <laughs> your, your connection, brother, is on it. You're talking. Everybody's not here, but you're talking about me. And he says, you have to get out. Because you cannot go. The Lord's not going to allow you to go where you are with your family, with those that are around you. Now, he doesn't know I have separate... I have identity crisis here. Like, I want to be a part of this family, but I also want to know who I am. And the way I can be who I am is that if I learn of them. I learn. I've given you years. Now let me share my future. Be a part of my future. Come on. It wasn't a good enough. No. No. So I was hurt. And growing up, being married, I didn't know how to look at my mother-in-law. I didn't know how to relate to women. I couldn't figure it out, and I didn't know how to treat my own biological mother because I was like, if I hang out with you, then mom gonna be upset here. And then if I hang out with you, mom, then she's gonna feel like she raised you, so at least you can, you can give me your today. If I have my grandbabies call her grandma and you grandma, you gonna be upset. What do I do? I wanna be a part of you. I, but I can't let you control me. I can't let you have, I can't be this shape, this mold that you want me to be. It's more to me than that. So I had to walk away. And when I say I walked away from the family that raised me, it was for my mental health. It was for my children. Because I could not have them be exposed to that type of lifestyle, that type of thinking, that type of environment. I'd rather them know your grandma feelings. Get to know them because I didn't get the opportunity to know her. And then give you the second chance because you didn't get to raise me, guess what? You get to be a part of raising your grandchildren. You can do what you didn't do with me and you can do it with them. In spite of what they say, you take this choice. You got this choice, Mom Phyllis. What are you going to do with it? And she chose to help me raise them. When I called her and said, hey, I'm getting ready to have your first grandchild. Mom Phyllis didn't have a license, valid. But anybody know you, she'll get anywhere she wants to go. She didn't have that. She called a bus, two buses, and told my husband, hey, what time do you get off of work? He said, I'm just now getting off. He, she said, pick me up here. He picked her up. And here she is holding her first grandson. Meanwhile, I gave that same message to the person that raised me. For 18 years, I gave that same message. She didn't show. She didn't show. But she made a choice. She made the choice. And I can't hold her no more than I can hold her to her decision or to her decision. It was your choice not to show up. It was your choice not to play the role that God gave you, full out. But in her short span of time, Phyllis, that she got to know me, she played that role, full out. All right. When I didn't have the money to get diapers, I don't know who she borrowed the money from, but Phyllis said, hey, what size you need? And I knew mom didn't have no, 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 no legal job. <laughs> But you know what? She made sure that I had what I needed Amen. to put diapers on my babies. Amen. So I said, on that day when we laid her to rest, and everyone knew, and my, the one that didn't raise me, the one that grew up with me, didn't give me a phone call, didn't send a dub with a note, didn't send a word from a friend of a friend of an uncle who worked together to me about my state of being. I said, you know what, LaVon? You cannot hold them accountable because unforgiveness 
will keep you stagnated. You think you're moving and operating, honey, you ain't doing nothing. You're just moving. You're barely existing. So I said, if that's the way they want to live their life, I have to make a choice just like they have to make a choice. Amen. And my choice is to live. Amen. And my choice is to share that memory of Mom Phyllis with my Ethan, Isaac, Zoe. Share it with them. The stories, the lessons. See, we have plans to go to different schools and teach kids about the effects of drugs, how it can be destroy if you let it. Again, it goes back to choice. Amen. Destroys families. Yes. Destroy relationships. Yes. We had that plan, but she got sick again. And she said, I can't do it. And I said, well, it ain't going to make sense if I do it. Your story needs to be a part of it. She said, but I'm a part of you. Mm -hmm. I said, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking at yourself, I'm telling you, and you're dealing with unforgiveness, it's sickness. It's like drinking poison and hoping the person that you're mad at gets, reaps the benefits of that poison. It doesn't affect no one but you. It has shown that anger can stay in your system. It can affect your cells and your body for up to seven hours. But a smile takes less work than a friend. We got to learn to, people are going to be people. It is not our job to to change them. However, if you want to speak to people's mind, you speak to their mind. If you want to speak to people's heart, you speak to their heart. But if you want people's lives to change, you want to speak to them through your life. How are you living? How are you holding things up? Amen. Are you letting people yesterday get to you? I choose not to. I choose not to because life is short and in a blink, you're here. And then tomorrow, what did you leave behind? Did you leave? See, Phyllis left behind more than a policy. She left behind lessons. She left behind things that I can, I can, hey, don't go this way. Because when you go this way, you gotta reap the benefits, the, the, the consequences is stuck to the lesson. If you go this way, son, you're gonna get the lesson. It, it has to come. That's how life works. See, she left me things that I can think of and say, okay, all right, you did this. And I can teach my kids about that. Same way as the one that raised me. She, too, left me lessons. See, I can go ahead and my, and my husband, we're thinking about adopting later on, years. But he said, he said, see, the lesson with that, when she raised me, and when I went out and tried to search who I am, she said, you search, you betrayed me. You hurt me. And as a mother, I get it, because I'm a mother of three. I understand. But she loved with strings attached. Mm. Right. I do this, but you got to do this for me. She loved with strings attached. Phyllis, she loved, but there was no strings attached. There was no strings. She just wanted to be around me. She wanted to be around, if I was down the street, she was happy to know I was just in the area. The difference. So when we do adopt, we don't love with strings attached. That's the lesson she taught me. The difference between love. And if you're gonna love somebody, realize that it is not just something, it's not just an emotion. It is a, a, a direct benefit of the action that you put into it. Love is actions, it's things that you do, things that you show. Actions speak louder than words. She's gone and her actions still speaking. Because I choose to listen. And many times when we hear different things, we don't choose to listen <coughs> to the, the point. <coughs> don't let your life waste away or just be stagnant while you're thinking you're getting the latest shoes, you got the latest purse, you got the latest car, and you think you're doing something. But what effects are you making on people's lives? What difference are you making in your own community? What are you doing in your job area? See, when this started happening, when I lost my mom, man, my work improved. I sell cars. Not only do that, man, I tell you, I do more than just sell cars. I'm like, hey, you need a car? Let me help you. 
No strings attached. I don't need the next referral. I don't need this. Look, I have sold a lady a car that literally only made $120 for all day. And we get paid this commission. No strings attached. She made me work better. I want to be more than just where I am at work. I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference. And we're just here to make a difference. We're here to put some, some, what do you call that when people imprint? When, when animals imprint on them? That's what we should do with one another. Amen. Make a difference. Let somebody choose to do something and realize that every choice you make comes with a consequence, good or bad. But the choice is still yours. All right. It's up to you. Forgiveness. Unforgiveness. Don't be don't hold yourself in prison. No, you ain't that same Quentin. We know that. You don't have no guard art. We get it. But don't imprison yourself. You're here to experience life. And life more abundantly. Not in not in prison with your mental strength. Not in front of whatever, what other people think. Don't hold yourself. Look, we can't live to please people. All right. The moment you make that shift and try to please everybody, then they're going to want you to shift again. All right. What am I, a chameleon? A chameleon? I can't do it. Uh, I can't keep up. I'm out. Mentally, I'm out. I can't keep up. Know that no, no matter where you are in life right now, it all begins with a choice. Every choice can be different. You can change something just by a choice. And what's in you needs to be out. It is your due diligence to find your purpose. Whether you do it in the Bible, whether you connect with the right people, whether you get on in, somebody said, thank God for internet and IG, yes, thank you, Jesus. There's information for you. Out there, it's your job to make a choice to seek it out. And then live your purpose out. Out high. Live full. Yeah. One thing I don't want to do whether I die young, whether I die old, is live with regret. Right. Amen. Amen. And right now, this is my choice not to live with regret. See, I, I had the, oh, if you do this, then somebody going to watch on YouTube. Somebody going to watch on Facebook. And then they're going to tell uh, the one that raised you that you did this. Right. You have no control. Because I set myself free. And I make the choice to step out into the unknown Amen. and do what whoever needs to hear is going to set them free. Yes, she's, she's dead and gone. And I keep saying, and I keep looking this way because this is where her casket was when we were in the church. Not in this specific church, y'all. Mm -hmm. But that's where she laid rest. But anyone that, that you lay to rest, you can choose to keep them alive in the principles that they sold into you. Amen. Into the conversations that you all had, into the lifestyle that they shared, whether that lifestyle was for the worst, you take the lesson, you take the good out of that lifestyle, and you implement it how you want to implement it, and how you want it to affect other people. You, it's just a bob and weave, y'all know. <laughs> and you live it with no regret. You don't let the what have stop you. Amen. Because you don't want to be in your room. You think somebody that's that's on a deathbed want to watch more TV? No, they stuck in thinking about, man, I wish I would have did this. I wish I would have said this. But we have the opportunity to do that. And if you stop by just letting unforgiveness harbor into your heart, you shrink. You're shrinking your true potential. You're shrinking who you are designed to be. And you're, there's people that you're supposed to connect with. And if you shrink yourself, guess what? You never make those connections. Don't shrink yourself. Be bigger than that because you are. God bless you. Amen. Let's give her another hand and say thank you again. Powerful testimony. Before we... Before, before we uh, before we uh, dismiss, and I'm going to turn it back over. Just briefly, is there anyone who needs special prayer? Uh, anyone who's dealing with something, dealing with unforgiveness, or dealing with some unresolved pain? This is the time, this is why we have this special uh, sleep-in Sabbath, and we want it to be
geared towards the young people. We want to give anybody an opportunity that's dealing with something that's bigger than you. I want the Holy Spirit to just rest on everybody in this room right now to let you know that it's going to be okay. I want the elders to come up. Is there one that want to come down and have special prayer? Anybody want to come down and, and say, Lord, I, 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 I've done all I can do. Elder Cannon, come on up. I've done everything I can do. Lord, is, I need to turn this thing over to you. Amen. Saints need to be praying right now. Is there one more? Somebody ought to just say amen. amen. This is not about pride or looking around to see. Uh, Pastor, can you come up with us? If you don't mind. Thank you. God has been so good. The speaker has reminded us what unforgiveness does to you. It simply shortens your opportunities. It shortens your strength. She told us that there are people that we're supposed to connect with. And when you've shrunken and you've passed by them on your job, the connection that God has put in front of you to change your life for the rest of your life, you've passed it away because you've shrunk it into your own self. God put opportunities in front of us every single day. The question is, are we going to see what God is trying to do in our lives and how he's going to bless us? Before we pray, I'm going to have our pastor, our, our, our pastor uh, Johnson, if you don't mind, Pastor Johnson. We're going to speak a prayer of forgiveness for those who come and bless us. Just before I do that, I'm standing here also asking God to search my heart and know my thoughts. Jesus says in Luke chapter 9 verse 62, no man with his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I want to make it in, but I want to live life and life more abundantly while I'm here. Dr. Henry C. Brandt said this in a book that I read that he authored, that forgiveness is the road to sound mental health. It is easy to live a life of insanity because one has not forgiven. Bow your heads with me. Loving Jesus in the words of David in the 139th Psalms, verse 23, 24. Search us, O Lord, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. And Lord, if there be any wicked way in us, lead us in the way everlasting. Lord, I intercede in this moment in time on behalf of our sisters who are standing, hands bowed and hearts are open. I intercede in this moment in time for those of us who heads are bowed and hearts are open, who may not have come forward, but looking forward. Lord, who just need a little bit of courage. They want to be set free. If they've been in bondage, Lord, to harboring hate, anger, over someone, Lord, who is controlling them even possibly from the grave. Lord, set them free right now. In the name of Jesus, for your glory, because happiness, joy, and peace is a powerful testimony, Lord, that you exist. Our world, Lord, is reeling and grieving and struggling and hurting and broken in need of a smile from someone who has been set free. Lord, you say that we would be your witnesses. We all don't have to preach sermons, sing powerful gospel songs, but just living a free life in Jesus. Free from the bondage and torment of yesterday is a powerful testimony that there is a God. Oh Lord, our sisters who are standing here along with myself and others, these elders, I ask, oh Lord, now that you would infiltrate our hearts, take charge 
of our minds. Give us a new beginning. Set us free from yesterday. And as we plow forward, may the freedom that we experience today be the joy that will say to our families, our children, our nieces, our nephews, our neighbors, and our co-workers, that God is alive and well. And you too can have life, and life more abundantly. Thank you for Sister Gillette. Thank you, God. Thank you for her strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for her courage. Thank you. And Lord, thank you for allowing her to be a living witness to the power of forgiveness. Lord, I place my sisters, my brothers, each and every one of us in the palm of your hand. Thanking you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you will do. Claiming all that you promise, because we believe it. And everyone under the sound of my voice says, Amen and Amen. This Sabbath is next week. We invite you to come back and enjoy some more praise and testimony. Um, and we'll be starting back at 11.30, so, or not, 11 o'clock. I apologize. I have a quick prayer for our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for, thank you for the speaker that we had today. We were blessed. A testimony can go a long way. It shows us how good you are and how living you are and shows how you're such a great and awesome God. Be with this day. I pray that everyone gets home safely and has a great Sabbath day. Thank you so much for being an awesome God again. We love you. Amen. Oh, they're dismissed. Oh, there's also food in the back as well. Sorry about that.